the Shinjuku stage, modeled after the Shinjuku ward in the beautiful city of Tokyo. In my last analyzing video, we found some pretty interesting stuff in Tekken 8's urban square. Some of it directed me to Tekken 4, so here I am. But why the Shinjuku stage? Well, just look at this place. The vibes are so cool, man. The music, the phone booths, the backgrounds. I had to look at it one more time. But now I don't have photo mode. I wonder if I could fight something worthwhile. Wait. A lame reference in Tekken? If you didn't watch Serial Experiments Lane yet, man, just do it after this video. It's legit one of the most interesting pieces of media that I watched. There's a reason I believe this probably is a reference, and not just a random name they like. You see, in the episode of Harada's Bar with Ken Kutaragi, they talk about how life was in the earlier days at Namco, and how excited they were with new tech, like high-speed internet, to the point of practically living and sleeping in the office just to get access to it. <laughs> then they talk about how internet at home was a luxury, but not at the office. <laughs> <laughs> One of the many topics covered in Lane is the societal changes that we would see in a world connected by a large, robust communication technology, named The Wired in the anime. Basically, these 90 shows predicted a lot about our relation to the internet. But my point is, these guys were having access to the cutting edge of tech, getting first hand a taste of our immediate future. And also they made Tekken, so obviously they have good taste. And showing this level of hype about new technology, so they must know their cyberpunk stuff. All of this makes it highly likely that someone in the team just loved Serial Experiments Lane, even if it's not a very famous show, and nobody can convince me otherwise now. But okay, let's stop rambling about old anime and get back to Tekken. Present day. Present time. So, we had a good start. But as you will see, the rabbit hole gets even deeper. 2. The big yellow star that sticks out in the background. Let me tell you, at one point of my life, I tried to learn Japanese. But the kanji guys kicked my butt. So we're going with the good old Google Translator. The sign reads Shinjuku West Exit. Computer building. Kobayashi camera. After some digging, I found a similar name. Yodobashi camera a Japanese retail chain specializing in electronics. What's interesting is that its Wikipedia page mentions some commercials that they made, where the store name always included Shinjuku Station West Entrance when mentioned to promote a sense of familiarity. Well, I found one of those from 1978. Wait, a yellow front? Just like in Tekken 4. So it's probably this place they were inspired by. Obviously with another name. I also found a recent photo of Yodobashi camera in West Shinjuku. It's strikingly similar. But this is not even the craziest part. I was going through my phone's camera roll, searching for some Shinjuku pictures I took when I went on a trip to Japan a couple of years ago. And I found the place! I took this picture! I wasn't attacking for Shinjuku stage and I didn't know, so I was destined to make this video. I think that Gotta makes me like literally Jin Kazama, guys. He's just like me, bro, for real. So, anyway, if you're visiting Tokyo and wanna throw hands with Tekken Force Jim, you know where to search him. 3. Movie posters. So, this one is kinda scary to be honest. There's three movie posters here the backing one, that looks like an action movie. This one, that's apparently written in Korean and translates to mind or heart. And this one with the dog, that translates to Ugo, Husky Adventures. So naturally, I went to search for movies with a husky to see if this was a movie reference. I found a Disney movie Togo, featuring a husky. But the thing is, this movie came out in 2019 and Tekken 4 is from 2001. So the game actually predicted this movie? It turns out the Disney movie is based on a real-life dog called Togo, who was basically a hero, where he, 
with his buddy Balto and other dogs, were responsible for the transport via dog sled of a medication through dangerous parts of Alaska to save communities from a developing epidemic of diphtheria. What's crazier is that according to Wikipedia, he was named after a Japanese admiral who fought in the Dosu Japanese War, Togo Heihashiro. I know Heihashi has other sources of inspiration behind his name and appearance, but the similarities here cannot be ignored. And as Lei said, Anyway, the fact is, Tekken 4 kinda predicted, of all things, a Disney dog movie. 4. Mishimaya So, after we found Mishimayo in my urban square feed, I found it funny to find more random Mishima business. They truly have everything. But again, what do you expect from a Zaibatsu? I was thinking this was inspired by Tsutaya, which is a video rental shop and a bookstore. But this one really looks like a convenience store. So, I think Mishimart would have made sense, especially when the colors look like a mixture of Family Mart with 7-Eleven. I don't know, maybe I'm missing something here, but it's always funny to spot Mishima things everywhere. 5. Candy Honey Cafe So, it's more or less known that there was some transfer of talent from the Virtua Fighter guys at SEGA to the Tekken project. The fighting game connection I could find with the name Candy Honey is in an old SEGA game called Fighting Vipers, with the legendary Yu Suzuki as the producer. There is a character named Honey or Candy, depending if you have the Japanese or the international version of the game. Maybe I'm overthinking here and it's just a common name for a cafe, but the Tekken and Sega VF connection goes way back, so I'd bet my money it is a tribute. Probably. 6. Isaac, Yen Lan and more sites. So, I wanted to get this out of the way before I jump to the last one, that I think it's kinda good. This one looks like a mock-up clothing brand. The name Isaac appeared again years after with a Tekken Mobile character. But I couldn't find any strong connection here. Cool banner nonetheless. Yen Land. This one is intriguing. The kanji translate to Willow Star, as in the Chinese constellation. By the name, this magical pentagram star, and the overall vibe, I'd bet they were thinking about a pachinko place or a casino. I don't know. And then there was many other Japanese signs I translated using Google and I couldn't find a deeper meaning. Maybe because I'm not a Japanese person in the 2000s, but here they are. Maybe you guys can find something. Lastly, I want to discuss the phone booths. They have this little logo in the top with the T and the letters TKK as in Tekken. They were probably inspired by the NTT logo in the phone books of Tokyo. NTT is a big telecommunications company in Japan, by the way. Also, one more thing. In the last Harada's bar, he said the phone booths were actually the first thing he came up with in Tekken 4. He thought people would like smashing opponents into the booth. Old Tekken fans in general didn't like the game very much because he changed it too much. But now people are starting to tell him it was a masterpiece. You can see the frustration in his voice when he talks about it. It's a very interesting talk, you should take a look. Being a content creator, I think I kinda get the feeling of frustration. When I think I finally understood you guys, I put my soul in my next video and it flops. It's very funny actually. But anyway, that's it guys. But tell me in the comments, am I missing something? Tell me your crazy theories on the comments below. In my last analyzing video, people came up with very interesting points about things that went way over my head, so I'm curious to see what you guys will find now. Also please like and subscribe to help me get to that 1k sub goal, it will mean a lot to me. And also if you're like super rich or something, or even if you have a little cash to spare, you can help this channel with a super thanks. Literally any value, you have my eternal gratitude. Bye!